Hello and welcome to my pitch. Today we'll be covering FriendFinder's network's data breach and how they screwed over 400 million users and got away with it. So, without further ado, let's get started. Ah, FriendFinder Networks. A website with 700 million registered users and a long track record of over 20 years of positive customer experiences. Truly, a website that deals in making people happy. Or at least it did. Is until a Twitter user came along. A mean Twitter user. On November 13, 2016, a Twitter user, which also went by the name of Revolver Online, claimed to have gotten the password file for six different servers of the FriendFinder's network's website. And the way he claimed to have done this was by exploiting what is known as an LFI vulnerability. LFI stands for Local File Inclusion. You see, typically when a website or an application deals with user input, it should, in theory, sanitize that input. Because if they don't, things can go wrong very quickly. In this case, the attacker was able to trick the application into printing not just what it was supposed to, but also very important and very classified files. The overall damage occurred across six different servers and on five different websites, and more than 400 million users got their accounts and passwords compromised. Now, I know what you're thinking. So what they got the password file? Those are usually encrypted anyway, right? I mean, how bad can it be? Well, turns out, it was bad. Very, very bad. Remember those passwords we talked about just a second ago? Well, turns out, over 120 million of them were stored in plain text, while the rest of them were stored in encrypted using SHA-1, which is a pretty weak encryption method. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why storing passwords in plain text is a bad idea, but somehow, FriendFinder Networks had been doing this for years. And if you're one of those people who are thinking, well, I'm safe because I deleted my account back in 2012 or something. Well, not really. Turns out, they had been keeping data from deleted accounts as well. You could expect a million dollar company like FriendFinder's network to know the value of proper password storage and hashing by now. But as it turns out, they're not very good at learning from their mistakes. And I say this because back in 2015, FriendFinder's network suffered a similar attack which used the exact same exploit to leak the account details of 3.5 million users. The only difference now was that this time they managed to break the 400 million leaked passwords record. And now you're thinking, hold up, how did they get away with this? Well, the short answer is, because they can. They hired a public relations company to deal with the fallout from this, and an army of lawyers to deal with any possible legal consequences. And then they just proceeded to seemingly ignore the issue and operate normally for two more years. Inevitably, in 2018, a large class action lawsuit fell upon FriendFinder Networks and a large legal battle followed. They were well prepared by this time, however, and in 2020, the court action ended with FriendFinder Networks not having to pay a single cent for what they'd done. As for consequences within the company itself, I couldn't find anything. No CEO stepped down, and as far as I could tell, not even a lowly IT guy got fired. Presumably because doing so could have been seen as an admittance of guilt by the courts of law. So, FriendFinder Networks is still there, operating as usual. Presumably still storing passwords in plain text, still keeping data from deleted user accounts, and still boasting 20 years of positive customer experiences on their website. Because they already screwed over 400 million users and got away with it. So, why bother with fixing anything?